We are the greatest and strongest group of women ever formed. Of women, by women, and for women. We ought to be watchers of the skies with the widest vision, the deepest sympathy, the most sensitive outreach, the longest view ahead, and the most limitless courage. We ought to be inclusive, inspiring, prophetic. In America in transition, its people profoundly dislocated as the Industrial Revolution comes of age. Women who had to earn their living poured into the mushrooming cities to find work in shops, mills, and factories. The living conditions were deplorable, and the new entrepreneurs were only too ready to exploit those with scant education, few skills, and no voice. In this climate, 35 women met in New York to talk about what they could do. An idea took root. Together, women could help other women fight the growing inequities and speak for those who could not speak for themselves. In Boston, a year later, another group of women gathered for the same purpose. They gave the new association an identity that would mobilize women across the country and eventually the world. The Young Women's Christian Association. The name and the idea spread rapidly to other large cities and in 1873 to college campuses, where young women found themselves in need of mutual support, safe housing, and the opportunity to share experiences. These pioneering associations became a women's movement, a force that in fulfilling its mission to put women first would change the world. As local YWs flourished across the country, a need for unification became clear. In 1906, through the leadership of Miss Grace Dodge, the National YWCA was formed. As first president, Miss Dodge brought to the new association a humanitarian spirit and a prophetic vision. We have to lay the foundations, not for one year or two, but for 50 years. Our great movement is going to live for centuries. We have to look at what thousands of girls will want or need in the future. Providing working women a safe and affordable place to live was an early priority of the YWCA. In every state, Centers were built, often on land donated by women, with construction, finance, and supervised by women. The new association was anchored by a landmark headquarter building in New York and a conference center in California. With World War I came the need for safe havens for military women, men, and their families. The YW answered this need with its 140 hostess houses. Today, many YW buildings still provide a safe haven for those in need, such as battered women and the homeless. Believing that a strong body is essential to a full life, the YW pioneered athletic programs that have benefited thousands of women. It has also given those without resources the opportunity to develop their talents. 
Today's sports advocacy program, which serves inner city girls, continues this commitment. From the early days, the YW has also acted to support sex education, family planning, and health care. Today, this commitment is reflected in the YW's Encore program with the Center for Disease Control and Prevention and the YW's advocacy of women's rights to reproductive choice and lifestyle preference. From the YW's earliest days, putting women first has meant creating opportunities to develop skills that would lead to better jobs, dignity, and self-respect. To support the young mothers entering the workforce, the YW pioneered child care programs. Today, YW child care serves thousands of families around the country. In the early 1900s, as is often the case today, women received less pay and were given less protection than men from unscrupulous employers. At the first YWCA National Convention in 1906, these inequities were addressed. These conditions must be remedied, and the association must do it. Such a body of women cannot be ignored. It will surely be able to influence legislation and in countless ways to control civic, social, and industrial conditions which affect the life of the woman who works. In 1911, before women even had the vote, these women in the YWCA held a convention and presumed to say that laws should be passed assuring fair labor standards for everyone, not just for women. They were able to help other people understand the imperative to get into the action, to do something, to take a stand, to go out on the edge of where society was willing to go. Throughout the century, the YW has spoken out on issues important to women, testifying before government officials, enlisting the support of presidents, taking a stand whenever and wherever necessary. From its founding, the YW has been an inclusive organization. As the 20th century progressed, membership among black and immigrant women grew dramatically. With the diversity, the YW became increasingly aware that its own members were facing racial discrimination. In 1946, the YW's interracial charter formalized the association's stance against discrimination of any kind. Whenever there is injustice on the basis of race, whether in the community, the nation, or the world, our protest must be clear and our labor for its removal vigorous and steady. In 1965, against a backdrop of growing civil rights tensions, the YW took the bold step of establishing the Office for Racial Justice. Renowned civil rights activist Dr. Dorothy Height was named the office's first director. Dorothy Height began to help us to confront the issues that existed between black and white and we began to learn how to deal with these issues and this was in the 60s and at the time of the great march on Washington the YWCA took a giant step forward and participated in the march on Washington. Embracing diversity, standing up for economic, racial and social justice, these have been and continue to be a YWCA legacy. There are the whole host of uh, socioeconomic issues that we face domestically, which impact dramatically the lives of women. Uh, and the YWCA has, for, for 135 years, been addressing those concerns. YW leaders and volunteers have always been active in helping women around the world establish their own YWs and address the needs unique to their cultures. From this exchange of ideas has grown the realization that in unity, women around the world can gain in strength, 
and power. The work that the YWCA has done all over the world with Palestinian women, with refugee women in the Middle East, has been very important in capturing the needs of women and in being supportive. Today, through the YW's Education for Global Responsibility programs, American women continue to learn from intimate exchanges with women around the world. What I'm most interested in is that they, they realize they're part of a world community and the problems and interests and excitements that women have in many other countries are something like ours, but we have so much to contribute to each other. The YW has always known that it takes knowledge, skills, and determination to make changes happen. The YW's convention process, bringing local YW representatives together every three years, is itself a training ground for leadership. One of the reasons I decided to come to law school um, was because of my involvement with the YW. Um, the projects we did relating to racial justice and civil rights, I felt so strongly about those that I thought I want to devote my life doing that and using the law as an instrument for social change. So in effect, the YWCA's agenda has now become my agenda. Today, the YW's Institute for Public Leadership plays a key role in expanding the vision and voice of women at all levels of government. Hundreds of women have learned how to effectively campaign for office, manage political campaigns, and become effective issues advocates. I came to the YWCA seeking a place to um, broaden my horizons. I had worked with the Native American associations on my college campus, and the YWCA was a really good place for me to continue to develop as a leader. The issues that really need to be talked about and to be understood are those that are going to require the most advocacy. And advo advocacy can truly make a difference in making the changes that are going to be needed so that women will have the power and the support to face the challenges that are out there in the real world for them. For 135 years, the YWCA has been a catalyst for change. For 135 years, women have given strength to the YWCA and drawn strength from it. My own hopes and dreams for the organization to become even stronger and to be a wider network of women working together towards the elimination of racism, towards the elimination of sexism. That's what hooks us in for a lifetime and keeps us wanting to participate is our commitment and our mission and our purpose. The YWCA movement plays a vital role in changing the landscape for women entering the 21st century. The YWCA stands for all the issues that women are facing today and will be facing. We're women and we, we know what we want and we know that we've got to learn how to get it. Of women, by women, and for women, for 135 years, the YWCA has been a beacon for all women. And in unity of vision and purpose, the YWCA will help women meet the challenges of the next 135 years.